It's another Manly Monday, and I am off this Manly Monday. I'm going to tell you guys right off the bat, because I had issues over the weekend that I'm still not over. I will spare you the details, but I'm off. And this is relevant to this video, because it's very important to be aware when you are not at your best. So I'm soldiering through, but I may zone, I may get words wrong. Um, yeah. Um, but we're talking today about is, is society training some men to be emotionally stupid? Um, and, and this came up because the, it's not therapy for this week is on emotional intelligence or the emotional intelligence quotient and this is one of those things that the wording is, ah, but the concept is perfectly sound. The idea that awareness and management of emotions is a life skill that for too long people thought was just a thing that happened not a skill that you actually had to develop and maintain. And it led to some stunting, I shall say. No, you know what? It's not even stunting because can we say it's stunting when it doesn't develop on its own? Maybe, I don't know. But people are, a lot of people are still at like a 12, 13 year olds emotional skills management level. And, you know, I, I want people to know if you recognize any of yourself in this video, it's not your fault. And this isn't something that only affects men. Some women are very emotionally stunted too. It just manifests differently in women. And we're focusing on men because it's Manly Monday, right? Um, one of the things about mental health uh, that I've discovered doing my work with Leanna Cares and It's Not Therapy is that therapy, the language of therapy and the language of emotions is very, very feminized. And that can be tough for, for guys because if you're raised in that be a man mentality, and there's nothing wrong with that, I want to be clear. But if you're raised in sort of a more traditional way and you encounter all this touchy-feely stuff, you you bounce off of it. You reject it at first because it's it's it sounds like bullshit, right? And I, I know this because I did it. I didn't want a bunch of touchy feely words. I wanted words that I felt had inherent meaning and I could actually use. So I'm gonna try to use words like that to explain what's going on here. If you like this stuff, help support this channel. Become a monthly patron. Patreon support is very important. Patreon.com slash Leanna K or buy a one-time Leanna Care session for someone who can use it but can't afford it. Coffee.com slash Leanna K. Again, six people, six people on the roster for subsidized Leanna Care sessions. Um, yeah. Um, emotional intelligence. I, Emotional skills, I'm going to say. This is one of these things because intelligence, to me, this isn't your intelligence stat in your D&D &D character. It's your wisdom stat. What we're talking about here is wisdom, right? Um, it's the ability to apply the information that you receive in a way that's not only going to be well received, but also useful. It's the how and the why of things, not just the what. And there are four main... I've seen stuff that has been everywhere from 12 pillars of emotional intelligence to four pillars of emotional intelligence. I'm going to stick with the four so it's easier because somebody, some people may be coming into this, you know, cold. If you frequently feel either numb or uh, overwhelmed 
if you feel like you just wish you could cry but you can't or you wish you could get a release for your emotions but you can't uh there are some skills that you can learn to help with that and it not only helps you socially it also helps at work more and more researchers are finding that emotional skills are very very good for companies and focusing too much on productivity and not focusing enough on relationships um can be can be a real drain on a workplace i saw one statistic it was in the uh harvard uh harvard business school online uh research shows that every unaddressed conflict can waste about eight hours of company time or your social time in gossip and other unproductive activities. So if you are conflict diverse, that is another marker that you would benefit from emotional skills training. And if after this video, you're just like, wow, I think I need this. I don't know where to start. We're working on it with the it's not therapy stuff we're working on some online workshops that are going to be low cost that people can attend to work on this stuff because we've rel we've recognized the need and people pay like five thousand dollars for a session with a personal coach with this stuff and i i could not justify that so that is like wow okay good for them the people who get that who've learned how to package that I, I actually just want to want to offer skills in a way that people can, you know, digest it. I, I don't think that this stuff should only be for the people who can afford $5,000, okay? Um, so the key skills to wisdom, emotional intelligence, um, self-management, what's that? We'll get to that. Self-awareness, social awareness, and relationship management. Now, the two that I think society actually trains men to be stupid in, in a unique way, is self-management and relationship management. I think women get nailed on the self-awareness thing. Um, but, you know, in individuals, it, it, with all this stuff, variations from individual to individual are always going to be greater than macro between genders, right? This, these are just trends and, and, you know, gendered socialization that we've seen. So self-management is basically useful emotional decision making so having your emotions feeling your feelings but being able to process them in a way that aids you in good decisions this does not mean ignoring your emotions the opposite because when you ignore your emotions it adds to your stress you end up losing control you blow up and a lot of people think that, you know, staying cool, staying calm is about suppressing emotions. It's not. Learn it faster than I had to learn it because that's, that's, I had one of those, I'll give you something to cry about biological fathers and he had no wisdom with this stuff. My stepdad, different story, but my, you know, my biological father, oh man. He read all the self-help books, so much Wayne Dyer. Um, and it was weird because he read all this stuff and had the words, but just shoehorned it into the way that he was already doing things, not using them to make meaningful changes. And that's the problem with the self-help approach. Um, it's only as good as the person interpreting it. And there's no back and forth for somebody to go, hold up, that's, you know, 
you're you're off the path a little bit. Um, so overwhelm. If you're frequently overwhelmed, that's an uh, um, a processing issue, right? Uh, and if you're trying to suppress your emotions, you're missing a critical piece of information. If you don't know what you're feeling, you can't process your feelings. If you don't know where the origins of your stress are, you can't become less stressed. If you're just putting your head down and getting through every day, it's going to build up and build up and build up until you can't take it anymore. Now, obviously that happens to men and women, but men, men do it in different ways and in different places, but the results of it are often more an angry explosion then, you know, women may, may, may break down. You know, we see all those things of in, in TV shows of professional women going into the supply closet and screaming into a pillow, right? You very rarely see men in media doing that. You see men blowing up and throwing things, right? And the problem with this is that these are normalized behaviors, but they're not okay. And, you know, unfortunately, because men yelling is normalized, people don't intervene early enough when, you know, a, a young man or a teenager is doing it. And then, of course, the people who do intervene are manosphere types that exploit it instead of... Uh, um, you know, instead of guiding people to better because at the end of the day, those types of people are interested in making money first, helping men second. Um, the other thing about self-management is energy, right? Stress management. So you don't feel the need to go out and get absolutely blottoed, you know, dr really drunk, really stoned, you know, impulse control, um, and then it's things like task initiation, initiative, that initiative role, following through on commitments, adapting to changing circumstances. All of this stuff gets easier when you're processing your emotions. And, you know, I want to be clear, this isn't the same route as um, autism meltdowns. Uh, meltdowns are a thing with people with autism and and this is something where yes self-management is part of the supports that people with autism get because they're constantly doing more processing than the average person they constantly have to cognitively translate what a neurotypical person it, you know, takes for granted in terms of social and, and communication heuristics. And so the buildup happens faster and the overwhelm happens, right? It, the world's just not built for people with autism. So I want to make that really clear. Um, the same thing, but obviously different roots of the issue. That is not a lack of skills so much as just requiring more skills. And the truth is that everybody has that. Everybody has something that they just have to be better at than the average person for various reasons to be thought of as equal. We all have them. It's really important to recognize which ones apply to you that way and learn it. And that's, you know, part two, that's self-awareness. Oh, self-awareness, a lot of people think they're self-aware, but they're not. Some people are, you know, very egotistical. They overvalue their skills and abilities. A lot of people on this channel undervalue a lot of their skills and abilities. They're way too tough on themselves. And that is not good. Being too tough on yourself is not good because stress management initiative, you know, adapting to changing circumstances. And that's why I stress the self-compassion and men especially are taught from a very young age, push, 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 you know, get tougher, get, you know, 
come on, you know, the, the inner, the inner critic, the outer critic, uh, as a child becomes the inner critic as an adult. And you don't want an inner critic. You want an inner coach, right? And good coaches don't constantly exhaust and abuse their players. So what self-awareness means in terms of emotions is are you actually aware of your feelings? And we know that men on average have a much smaller emotional vocabulary than, than women do. Men also tend to use anger as a masking emotion. Now, women avoid admitting they're angry, though more and more men are, uh, it, it, it won't admit they're angry either. Even when they're losing it, it, the number, the number of times I have had the, I'm not angry, I'm perfectly calm, you idiot. If you're name calling, you're not in control. You're not perfectly calm because name calling isn't a good tactic. And so many people think that those control maneuvers, those control moves are an indication that they are in control. They're not. It's an indication you're flailing for control. Or you're taking the piss out of things the way I do a lot of the time. Though I I really, um, I am very aware of when... I, I go there, usually with somebody on Twitter. It's, I'm, I'm just not, it's just not me to attack someone's intelligence just because, why? You know, um, but, and it, it's such a sensitivity in the nerd space. And I think a lot of people echo that language because, some male relative or even a female relative used it on them and it, it just became a habit. But um, paying attention to your emotions instead of trying to ignore or suppress them is really tough in the short term. It's really beneficial in the long term. And the first thing you want to do is be aware of those feelings physical sensations, you know, a tightening in your throat, your stomach, your chest, uh, even a dizzy feeling, your breathing getting faster. Uh, and take those physical sensations, even, even that adrenaline surge, and start connecting them to feelings. Now, when you have a trauma condition, that's a trip because you'll get that nervous system response and not know why. And in my case, it was connected to time of day. It's like, yep, it's 11.03 p.m. Um, and being aware of that was the first step to undoing that. Weird, right? But it just, your body does get trained into rhythms. And if you are, say, constantly stressed at work, you're going to start the ramp up when you start your day, which is usually the same time, or it can be connected to locations. It can be connected to certain people, but it's really, really important to be aware of what your body's doing and then attach them to feelings that you can name and individualize. It's important to know the difference between what being angry feels like versus what being sad feels like, what being afraid feels like, and what being happy feels like and really happy feels like, right? It's really, really important to know the difference. And because sadness and fear are, are so, you know, beaten out of boys, usually figuratively, sometimes literally. Uh, whereas fear is really encouraged in girls, whereas anger is the one that, oh, you can never be this. And again, more and more guys are getting that too. 
Uh, it's a really confusing message because, you know, these feelings are fear and sadness are taken from boys first. And then as they hit those teenage years and become scary and dangerous, then that thing they were using to mask the fear and sadness that, you know, manifests as anger, that's taken too. And you get people who are having all these things going on with no names for them and no socially acceptable way to express them. And so they just build up and build up and build up and build up until it becomes a socially unacceptable way to express them, right? The ability to experience intense feelings without completely losing control and doing something you regret is tied to the recognition and naming and validating of emotions. And that is a skill. And some people call it mindfulness, you know, focusing on the present. Uh, some people are better at it than others because they were raised in families that taught it. But because it was raised in, you know, it was family instead of school, people don't really think of it as education or learning, but it is, right? The example, a male role model showing that you can be, you know, upset with someone and upset such a vague word. And it's usually a mix of, you know, um, anger, sadness, fear, disappointment. Um, you know, frustration. Frustration's the one that everything seems to default to, right? I'm not angry, I'm frustrated. I'm not afraid, I'm frustrated. I'm not sad, I'm frustrated. Frustration's safe. But frustration is like a four on the angry scale, right? It's irritating. Like, when I'm playing Elden Ring, I get frustrated, when I start getting really angry, it's that friggin' crossbow <laughs> in the academy. I, oh my god, I fucking raged at that part. And that was the point where I'm like, okay, maybe I should stop for a while. A lot of people, I think, use games like that to vent. You know, it's safe to get frustrated. It's safe to get angry. You can yell at your screen. But that's not healthy long term you have to learn how to be angry without screaming and losing your shit and you know it's a life skill and again there's not going to be answers today this is the beginning sort of recognizing what because everybody's going to need different things right what i find is take a moment right um, because when you start feeling your feelings, when you've numbed them, when you've not been allowed to feel, they're overwhelming at first. They are. You, some people find it useful to take time to feel your feelings. That's what gaming time is for a lot of people. Um, and, but it's really important to, instead of just raging, really stopping and learning to slow down instead of speed up when you're feeling those intense, unpleasant emotions, right? Because the thing is, a lot of people spend so much time trying not to feel the bad stuff that they also lose the ability to feel the good stuff. And then you get depression. And so then this is the one that whacked me over the weekend. Social awareness. I was at a party and it was one of those weird ones. Like I walked in, the smells were overwhelming. It was loud as anything. It was so loud I couldn't hear anything. And then my glasses fogged up. So three senses and it was, it was cold to hot, which I have issues with because of a, 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 a nerve in my neck that I, I can't go hot, cold, hot, cold, hot, cold. It's real bad. Um, so, um, 
four out of the five senses were fucked there, right? And smell and taste are connected. So it, it, it was overwhelming. And then it was just one of those rooms I knew two people there. And the other types of people were not my people. I couldn't predict which way they were going to move. I couldn't predict movement patterns. Everywhere I stood, I was in the way. Now that is partially a bad room layout at a party. But I couldn't do anything about that. It was just, ah, you know, just so I ended up finding like a corner next to the bar and talked to the bartender who was this nice, you know, older lady um, for most of the night because she, because she was a bartender, had predictable things going on with her socialization. I do not do well in rooms full of drunk and stoned people. It's a messed up energy. I don't like it. And I'm allergic to weed. So the stoned people trigger really bad allergies and my eyes were crusted over the next day. Um, and that was really a just get through it kind of thing. And the thing about social awareness is a lot of people do the, well, you know, whatever happens to me is fine, whatever. I just don't want trouble. Well, that is trouble. When you're having your boundaries violated, that's trouble. So you're not solving trouble. You may be, you may be avoiding conflict, but you're not stopping trouble. You're draining your battery. And that self-awareness versus social awareness is predicated on the ability to know where you begin and where the rest of the world ends and vice, you know, where you end and the rest of the world begins. Um, and that's a lot, that's something that a lot of people don't learn. And that lack of boundaries manifests very differently in men than women. A lot of men tend to withdraw, and, and me, because um, they just, being around people is painful. People hurt you, and you don't know how to stop it, so it's best to just avoid people. Um, women are more likely to become people pleasers, but obviously exceptions apply, right? I know guys who are huge people pleasers, um, and they're super popular, and then one day they'll just flake. Because it's too much. That's not good long term. You can't build anything. Right? Um, now, one of the things that the social element, I found this really, really useful. And again, we're going to be doing, we're going to be doing workshops on this. Is eliminating assumptions. Someone says something to you. What does it mean? And I found, you know, knowing a lot of uh, autistic people help me with this a lot because what an autistic person says when they say something is not the same as a neurotypical person. Um, neurotypical people use far more conversational heuristics than an autistic person. For example, this is when I messed up, you know, the nice thing to say to someone is, how would you feel about helping me out this weekend? Right? That to a neurotypical person is, can you help me out this weekend? To an autistic person, it's, they literally answer the question, not always because some of them learn how to code switch, but the person I asked that to answered the question I asked, which is, they answered, you know, not great. I want to play, you know, I want to play video games this weekend. Can you help me out this weekend? Yes. Right. And stuff like that has made me aware of how many jumps conversations make. Catch those assumptions. Are you really saying what you intend to say? And are you adding or subtracting meaning from the other person's statement? Ask questions to be sure. It helps a lot. And that's where we're getting to relationship management um, 
and learning to see conflict, healthy conflict as a good thing. You know, I get called aggressive and argumentative and combative a lot. And it's funny because I'm not actually arguing. I'm just not doing that thing that certain people are used to, which is backing off when they charge. So they get a conflict they're not used to having because, you know, you get the, unfortunately, this happens with people a lot who end up in the mental health system at a young age. When kids are over therapied, they learn how to work their families. And so they have certain trigger phrases where the family just scurries and that's bad therapy, right? When, when a, a, Parents have no authority over a child because that mental health condition has just taken over the whole family. That's a problem because kids still need the security of the parents being in charge until a certain age. And it also happens in in hierarchies, social and, and business hierarchies. When someone is a weak leader, there becomes this leadership gulf and people start getting really skittish and conflict averse because when there's no referee, there's no rule book as to how to have conflicts. And people who work with and for me learn fairly quickly or it's not going to work out. I'd rather have the small fight early than the big fight later. I'm one of those people, please tell me when there's an issue. And it takes some people a while to realize I'm serious because every other time they've done it with somebody, it's been a lie and, and it's blown up. And like I said, if you have these different ways of doing things, it's not your fault. They were what you had to do to survive in other environments. What I want you to know is those environments weren't healthy and there is another way. And the thing that's great about having the smaller conflict early is, you know, people ask me all the time, how to avoid getting in too deep with bad people or bad groups? Well, you set those boundaries early. You have those small conflicts early. And if you get a reaction you don't like, next. Now at work, it's a more subtle art. You have to thread the needle sometimes. But you know, sometimes finding another job is the right thing if management just gets really, really toxic. But I think a lot of people struggle at work just because they're taking on way too much, don't know how to assert themselves, don't know how to set boundaries. And so everything, you know, the self-management and self-awareness isn't there. Um, the, uh, uh, you know, uh, relationship and, and uh, social awareness aren't there. And if you're, what's social awareness versus relation, relationship awareness? Just social kind of what's going on versus, you know, the dynamics between people. That's the separation there. And then again, it all kind of mushes together. That's why it's your wisdom score. And for too many people, because of the way the education system works, because everything has been medicalized in terms of emotional well-being, wisdom tends to be people's dump stat. And if it is, it's not your fault. Um, like I said, we are going to be doing things in the near future. If you like what you hear here, there are some sign up things. There are links in the description box. You can sign up for to be notified when we're going to be starting these workshops. We were going to do it in you know February. And then we realized, wait, people still don't have money from Christmas. So we were aiming for March ish. April now. Uh, help support this channel. Become a monthly patron. Patreon.com slash Leanna K. Or buy a one-time Leanna Care session for someone who can use it but can't afford it who's working out this stuff with me. Coffee.com slash Leanna K. Thanks for watching Manly Mondays.